another episode of Inspiration Talks. Today, we have a very special guest all the way from USA. Anthony Figueroa is with us. She is a writer. So, before any delay, let's welcome her. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How about yourself? I'm good. First of all, thank you so much, Ethan, for being part of Inspiration Talks. So, Ethan, I would like to know about where were you born and what did you study? Yeah, so um, I was born in New Jersey and um, I ended up going to college in Philadelphia. I studied uh, business administration and marketing while I was there. And I just so happened to my husband while I was in undergrad and everything. Um, a few years later, we got married and he is a part of the military. So we've moved all around the world due to his um, job. And I myself, I also work in the military, but as a civilian. And I most recently just started writing children's books. Okay. So what was your favorite subject when you were a kid? Um, when I was a kid, I really liked math a lot. And now I actually am a budget analyst for the Air Force. So they kind of go together. Okay. So do you have any favorite childhood memory? Um, I would say pretty much just any time that I had with um, my immediate family. I grew up at the beach, so we'd go to the beach often, and um, I just had a really good childhood, and I'm close with both my parents and my brother, so just family memories. Okay, so were you afraid of anything? Or right now, are you afraid of anything? Right now, um, not so much. When I was young, always kind of apprehensive about potentially failing. So I had a fear of failure, but I am not less anymore. Okay, so at the minute you were little, what did you want to be? Like, did you want to be a doctor or a- So I didn't have anything, uh, a career specifically in mind. I just, I really wanted to travel. So I thought that being a major in college and studying business would help being the opportunity to be a doctor. So, uh, so what was your biggest challenge in life? Did you face any challenges in life? Yeah, so um, I would say recently, this past year has been very challenging. My mother passed away in November and she was like my best friend, one of my biggest cheerleaders. So just navigating life without her now is a lot more difficult than what I ever imagined it would be. So um, just still trying to do things that would make her proud and make my family proud and Okay, Ethan, so what's the most important lesson you have learned in your life and which you would like to share with the listeners? Hmm, I think the most important lesson that I've learned is that you just know what other people are going through and to still be kind to them. When did you realize that you wanted to become an author? Yeah, so um, originally I just started writing a book for my son and I was just gonna keep it within our household and use it just to entertain them like that. But when I told my family and my friends about it, they actually thought that it would be an um, idea to put out there for other military families to be able to use. So then I just started researching on how to get the book published and to put it together and distribute it and everything like that. So I'd say I originally never really intended on being an author. I kind of just like fell into it. Okay, that's great to know. Okay, so do you wish you knew before you started your career? I guess just to be patient with the process. Um, I didn't really have anyone that I could ask questions to or anything like that. So I had to conduct a lot of my own research and just through trial and error, learn through my mistakes that way. Um, the first book I wrote, there were a few hiccups because I just kind of really didn't know the process or anything like that. But the second one definitely went more smoothly. Okay, so as you're writing books for the children, so I would like to know how do you spend the time in writing books apart from managing your family and job? <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's pretty difficult, I will admit that. Um, I have a three-year-old, a two-year-old, and a two-month-old now. So I don't really get much sleep to begin with. So usually when I'm up um, just doing feedings and everything like that, that's when I'll try to schedule my appointments for interviews and podcasts and everything like that. And um, any kind of writing ideas that I have, I'll jot them down. And then just, I work my social media as I get small little breaks throughout the day. Um, I wish I could say that I was successfully doing everything, but it's definitely a balancing act. There's certain things that I just don't get done if I'm having a busy week with 
either my full-time job or with just uh, appearances and everything like that. So just trying to balance it. Okay, so as your husband works in military, so what do you think about residency? Why is residence important in military? Yeah, um, it's definitely important for military families to be resilient because our lives just change so much and they can change drastically in a very short period of time. Um, we deal with having our family member deployed, um, just relocating to areas where we might not know anyone at all or anything about the area, moving all around the world, short distance. It's just a lot of change comes at you in a lot of different directions. Resilient definitely helps you just like get accustomed to life and everything like that. It's not emotionally break down anytime that there's an obstacle. Okay, so as you have moved around a lot in the meantime, so what city is your favorite till now? Where you would like to spend more time? Like where you would have wished that I wish I would have spent more time in this city? Yeah, so I would say um, we were stationed in England. We were in the Suffolk area and I just loved it there. I loved everything about it and I loved being there. And we were there for three years, so it was a good amount of time. And I would go back in an instant, but I'm also excited because at the end of this summer, we're going to be moving to Okinawa, Japan. And I haven't been to Asia yet or anything like that. So just the traveling opportunities and learning a new culture, I think it's going to really benefit my family. Oh yeah, it is. And Japan is a very really nice place, basically. I'm like, it is like very progressive even in everything. What skills do you possess? for residency and what do you think you would like to improve? So I think um, I'm pretty good at being open-minded and uh, I love learning about new places and exploring and just trying to get acclim acclimated whether it's in the United States or if it's an overseas assignment. Um, things that I can improve upon I would say is just trying to be more organized when getting our house and our items put together to be shipped out and getting them unpacked and everything like that. Um, I kind of wait for the last minute doing that, so I am working on getting that done earlier. Okay. Do you see residence as being a quality that someone uh, can learn or develop? If so, how? What small steps do you think can be taken towards becoming more resilient in everyday life? Yeah, I definitely think um, your life experience uh, helps shape you and certainly just being able to thrive and succeed during hard times um, helps shape your resiliency. Uh, I would say definitely being open-minded um, will help you just because you can learn so much from other people and just also not being afraid to ask like questions and to be curious and to explore and everything like that. Um, and for me, one of the things that always helps me is if I'm having a hard time, I just remind myself that it's temporary. It's not permanent. The time's gonna pass. I'll get through it. And that I've been through harder things in life before and I'm fine, I'm still here. So just to always try to re remain positive and just know that everything's gonna work out for you in the end. Yeah, you're right. Hard times never last forever. It's just an exam for the people and we just have to be patient in the, our hard time. So, Ethan, uh, was there any situation which you faced, like what you anticipated from this situation, it did not end it up like that. So what did you do in such situations? Like, have you faced such situations? Yes, um, yeah, so we were leaving England. Um, we were moving to New Mexico from England and I knew that when we got there, my husband was gonna be away at a school slot for six months. So I was doing the move by myself and like everything that could have went wrong with that move went wrong. Um, I didn't have packers, unpackers show up when they were supposed to. I had a ton of broken furniture and just items that I couldn't really replace and everything like that. And then just like little things like trying to get the house settled and organized was really difficult for me to do because it was just me so moving furniture and stuff like that was tough and um we moved during the summer so it was like 110 degrees in the desert i wasn't acclimated to the weather or anything like that and it just really started off like living there on a bad foot and eventually it got better 
um, toward the end of living there, but it just really didn't work out like how I planned. And I was kind of stuck there because for my full-time job, I obviously had these how to do that. I couldn't just escape or anything like that. So it was a long six months. Okay, so let's imagine and inspire. So I think if you win, for example, $10 million, how will you spend that money? <laughs> Um, first, I would obviously want to make sure that my loved ones um, would be taken care of, especially if something were to happen to me. So I would want to get them set up. And then the rest, I would probably donate to medical research, particularly um, for lupus research. Okay. So if you could live anywhere for one whole year, what country would you choose? I would not mind living in Italy for a year or Greece. But um, I am excited to go to Japan too. So that's kind of a tough, um, but Italy and Greece, I would say are my favorite country that I visited. But like for me, I just really like having a beach near me. So that's just one of the key components as to where I'd want to settle. Okay. So if money wasn't a factor, what would you do with your time? I think that I would definitely um, use that time to travel more and to be able to bring my family with me. So with my kids, whether it was they had a tutor or um, were enrolled in certain schools for certain periods of time and everything like that, just so that we all would be able to go together and experience the things with one another. Okay, okay, that's great to know. Okay, so Ethan, do you like to learn languages? I do. Um, I am going to attempt to learn some Japanese. Uh, so far from what I've seen, it's pretty difficult, but um, I do. I like being open-minded and like I said, just trying to be able to explore a new culture and be able to communicate and everything. It's definitely beneficial to your experience. Okay. Uh, so does anyone inspires you? Um, I would say my mom, she definitely inspires me. Um, I said earlier that she just recently passed away this year, but she was just a really great mother and was like my number one cheerleader and everything. So I definitely want to be that person for my kids. Okay. So, so what do you do when you get angry? Do you get angry though? Uh, yeah, I get angry. <laughs> um, I do. Uh, usually I, I try not to, but I, will get frustrated at times, especially when things aren't going as planned. But uh, one of the things that I like to do is um, I like to go for a walk or um, do some kind of form of exercise, particularly like yoga or stretching. And um, just to get outside and to calm down that way. So walk definitely helps with my mind. Okay. So yoga, yeah, yoga literally helps the mind to relieve even stress. Mm -hmm. So d how, what do you do to relieve stress? Uh, during periods of stress, yeah, yoga, um, really any kind of form of exercise that I can do with, uh, especially if it's with the kids and I put them in a stroller and go walking with them outside or something like that, that definitely helps uh, ease my tension and anxiety. Okay, so Essen, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, the next five years, I'm hoping to have a few more children's books uh, written and everything like that. And uh, I have no idea where we'll be living in five years or anything like that. But I just hope that I, um, somewhere that I like and that, again, we're able to just travel and see more of the world that we haven't seen. Okay, that's great to know. So, Ethan, if you had a superpower, what superpower would you like to have? <laughs> um... I had a superpower. Yeah. I guess I would say to be in more than one place at once, because uh, trying to balance my schedule can be pretty difficult at times. So just having that ability to be able to, is, yeah. Okay, so you would like to clone yourself and be present in every place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea though. I wish it was possible yeah. in reality. Yeah. Um, okay, so as you moved from one place to another, so like there were different weathers in every place. So what weather do you like the most? Um, so I, oddly enough, even though I like going to the beach and everything like that, I love snow. So 
anywhere where it snows and we can ski or go hiking, I love that. But at the same time, I do like the tropical aspect of just being on a beach and somewhere sunny, but you do without the humidity at times. Okay, Okay, so if you get a chance to write book tomorrow, so what title will you pick <clears throat> for the book? Oh gosh. Um I would probably write a book like something regarding like my experience with my current move right now. Just everything that's going into it to get ready to get out to Japan, um, to get the kids ready. We have two dogs that were there and everything too. And it was just a complicated kind of move because we moved from one house into another house temporarily. And then we're doing the big move over there in August. Okay, so you are preparing yourself and your children for the big move for August. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ethan, would you like to give any advice for those who would like to come in your field? Yeah, um, so I would say if you have an idea of anything that you want to do, just go after it. Um, I never imagined that I would have actually like published a book and be a best-selling author now or anything like that in a million years. But I had the idea and I went through it. And every time that there was a hiccup, I didn't surrender and give up or anything like that. I would just try again, you know, review what I learned as a mistake so that I don't make it again. And just kept pushing myself to do what I needed to, in order to get the book out there. So I would say just go after your dreams and your goals. And if it doesn't work out instantaneously, to be patient. And it will, if you have the drive, you can accomplish anything. That's right, I completely agree with you. So any tips for those who would like to prefer to write their first book? Uh, I would say definitely um, write as many drafts and have as many people read it as you can in the beginning and to also get a professional editor. Um, I have a tendency when I look at a document too many times, my eyes just glaze over it so I don't catch my own errors. But just to get other people's opinions and feedback and to be receptive to them, to not take any uh, criticism personally or anything like that. And um, that you will run into some hard spots with uh, getting it out there and everything, but just be patient with the process and get it done. That's right, I completely agree with you. Okay. So Ethan, what one piece of advice would you like to give to the listeners who are listening to you right now? Um, so I would say like in terms of gaining resiliency and everything like that, uh, I said it before, just uh, remain patient, know that hard times don't last forever. Um, try to have a positive outlook too, because when you're surrounded by negativity, and unfortunately, it, it doesn't do one at all. So just trying to go with uh, life and be positive and just learn from your experiences. And if you're in a position that you're able to help other people, help them out too, because you don't know what they're going through or anything like that. So yes, and it was great talking with you. I really enjoyed talking with you. There is a small gesture for me. Thank you so much for the mug. You're most welcome. Uh, so would you like to say something in the end, Ethan? Uh, thank you for having me as a guest on the show. I hope uh, I can inspire someone out there to go after their dreams and to be more resilient in life's hardships. Can you say something? So I, okay, say once more. Something. Can you hear me? Now say something. Can you hear me?